Hello my friends, I'm Clover and today we're going to solve the gas puzzle originally posted by Philip Newman on March 18th, 2024. It's called Sequence Snicked and I need to explain that a little bit before I start solving because there are two things going on here. One of them is that Philip for a little while now has been doing an ongoing series of gas puzzles where the titles all contain puns on the phrase sequence break. I think we had sequence break, sequence brick, and sequence snake. And the puzzles all have this hallmark, which is also a, a very much a Philip Newman thing to sneak into gas puzzles, of a consecutive or nearly consecutive series of given digits. And you can see that we have that here as well. Now, I recognized this as part of this series of puns from Philip when I first saw this title. However, um, I did not know what a snicked was, <laughs> so I looked that up, and according to Wikipedia, snicked is the sound made when Wolverine, the superhero, um, extends his, his hand claws. <laughs> um, apparently the sound effect is snicked, and that is very appropriate with this puzzle because it kind of has the iconic uh, three-claw symbol that you see associated with Wolverine. I've probably completely embarrassed myself to all of you comics fans out there. Uh, feel free to, to educate me further in the comments. But let's have a look at this puzzle. So, normal Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits one through nine once each in each row, each column, and each outlined three by three region. And on top of that, we also have these blue marked diagonals. And in this puzzle, digits cannot repeat along either of these diagonals. Or in other words, each diagonal contains the digits one through nine once each, just like in a row, column, or region. On top of that, we have thermos. Those are these shapes. And along each of these kind of long thermometer shapes, the digits have to increase, starting at the round bulb and going upwards towards the tip. And then we also have Kropke pairs. That's these dots in the grid. Black dots indicate that the digits on either side have to be in a one to two ratio. In other words, one of them has to be twice as large as the other. White dots indicate that the digits on either side have to be consecutive, such as say two and three or seven and eight. There could be other pairs elsewhere in the grid that have that relationship that aren't marked with the black or white dot. And we know that because Philip has said in the rules, Ah, uh, there's no negative constraint. This is also sometimes phrased as not all possible dots have necessarily been given. So with that in mind, let's get started solving. And the first thing that stands out to me in this puzzle is these very lengthy thermometers. Because I know that if I have a if I have a thermometer of length n, and I talked about this in a previous video, in this case these are of length 7, the number of degrees of freedom that I have in each cell is going to be 9 minus that length. So in this case, 9 minus 7, I'm going to have 2 degrees of freedom, meaning that I have to pencil mark 3 digits into each cell. But I lose a degree of freedom here because this can't start with 1. The lowest digit it can possibly start with is 2. So this can either be 2 or 3. This is 3 or 4, 4 or 5, 5 or 6, 6 or 7, 7, 8, 8 or 9. And that's just all kind of a fancy way of saying... Let's just pencil mark in possibilities that will allow us to have increasing digits going upwards along this thermometer. So this 4 keeps this from being a 4. So we're going to have to make that a 5 in order to preserve the thermo. So we're going to have to go 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 there. And then this is either 2, 3, or 4 because those are our only remaining digits. Something very similar is going on here. This is either 1 or 2. 2 or 3, 3 or 4, 4 or 5, 5 or 6, 6 or 7, and 7 or 8 because we can't use 9, so the biggest digit we can use is an 8. This can't be 6 thanks to the 6 in the box, so that is 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Now we only have one thermometer remaining, and the thing to observe here is that the lowest this digit could be is a 2 because it can't be a 1, there's already a 1 in the row. And then the highest this digit could be is an 8, can't be a 9 because there's already a 9 in the row. And if we kind of mark those out, we see that that actually restricts us to just one way of filling out the whole thermometer. And that is this way. And that's going to be enough information to give us these digits and clear up our pencil marks. So that's now going to be a 2, and we can finish these columns as well. Our only remaining digit in this column is an 8. We need 1 and 9 in these cells, and we know where they go. So from here, let's focus on our diagonals. 
So if we look at this positive diagonal, it already has four, five, and six, so it has the three middle digits. It still needs our three low digits and our three high digits. So it still needs one, two, and three, and it needs seven, eight, and nine. And let's just take it kind of from the top right to the bottom left. So can we put one, two, three, seven, eight, or nine here? Well, we definitely can't put seven, eight, or nine there. And we also can't put one or three there because those cells see this as well. So the only remaining possibility there is two. How about this one? Can't be two, can't be three, can't be seven, eight, or nine. So that must be a one. So we've used one and two. Now let's go down here. This can't be one, two, or three, or nine, or seven. So it is eight. And in fact, we don't even have to think any further about one and two because we've already used them on this diagonal. So we still need to place a three, a seven, and a nine. This cell can't contain a three or a seven, so that's going to be a nine. And we just need to place our three and our seven along this diagonal. Now let's take a moment and look at some of these Kropke dots. So in region two, we have this black dot that tells us we have to have two digits and a one to two ratio. Now there are only a couple of ways to do that using Sudoku digits. One of them is one and two. Another is two and four. There's also four and eight and three and six. And if you were paying attention when I listed those, you see that we've eliminated three of the four possibilities already by already having a two and an eight in the box. The only remaining way to do it is going to be to have it be three and six. So now these are going to be one, four, and five. Those are our three remaining digits in the region. And let's pencil mark in a few more of our pretty restricted regions here. So this bottom left region only needs one, five, and six. One can't go in those positions due to the two ones there and there. So that's our one. And then we have a five, six pair. Here we need four, five, and nine. Nine can't go into these two positions so that it goes here. And that is a four, five pair. Next, let's look at this negative diagonal. So starting with the middle region this time, we need to place one, two, eight, and nine into this region. We already have a two and an eight on the diagonal, so we can't put two or eight in these cells because two and eight are already used. That gives us a one, nine pair, which lets us eliminate one and nine from those cells and make them two and eight, and we know which order they're going to go in. And that kind of bounces back and tells us there's a one and nine on the diagonal. So now we only need four more digits on the diagonal and we know what they are. They're three, four, six, and seven. So where can those go? Let's pencil mark them in and then make some eliminations. So this can't be a seven. This cannot be a four or a seven. This can't be a six or a three. And this cannot be a three. So what is that given us? Well, we have this kind of three, six pair situation here that tells us that this is going to be either a four or a five. We also have this one here, which creates a four or five pair there. That's going to be useful because that tells us that um, this cell cannot be a four. So that actually gets us to the point of having a three, six pair on the diagonal, which eliminates six there because we can't repeat the six again on the diagonal. So what else can go here? We need to place a three in this region. It can't go into that column and it can't go into this row. So it goes here. And then we still need five, six, and eight. We have a five, six pair here. So this is going to be either four or seven. Let's focus back up here because we got some more deductions down here that I suspect are symmetrical up in the top left. So we need two, four, five, and seven. And the only place seven can go is there. And this can't be four, so we have this kind of two, four, five, triple situation here. Okay, let's finish this off. So if we look at this Kropke dot here, we can't use a four and we can't use a six. So that eliminates the possibilities two, four, four, eight, and three, six. So this must be a one, two pair, which goes in that order, thanks to the two right here. That eliminates two from this cell and gives us a two there. And now we have this beautiful four or five pair that tells us this is a six and that's a five. And the six will give us a three and a six and we'll also resolve this. Now we just need to finish this column with a nine, which resolves the one and nine there. These cells have to contain two and eight to finish the row. So this is no longer an eight, so that's going to be an eight. I have a six here. I don't know how long I've had that for, but we can go ahead and resolve that. And we also get the four or five pair due to the five at the bottom of the column. The four gives us a one five pair here. So we have a five and a one. The four tells us this is a seven. 
And at this point, we should be able to just apply some Sudoku techniques to finish up. That's going to be a three to finish the row. This is going to be an eight to finish this row. These are going to be five and nine to finish this row. This has to be a six because it's adjacent to seven. And also I could have worked that out by Sudoku, but doing the arithmetic is faster for me anyways. Um, and that's a four. I have a four here, which resolves my four five pair. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's sequence snicked. By the way, give Philip some congratulations. He just reached 1 million registered solves of his puzzles in Sudoku Pad over the last approximately 10 months since we started having access to that data. Um, so huge congratulations to Philip. That's really, really exciting. Seven digits. Here's to the next million. Hope you enjoyed this puzzle. Link to solve yourself is in the description below, and I will catch you next time.